So the point I want to make here is that um, when you assess knee flexor strength uh, capabilities with the Nordic hamstring exercise and you uh, basically attach or you contact the ankles of the players to a force measuring system, if you quantify the force in newtons, uh, which is the output of the load cells, for example, or if you quantify that force in newtons per kilogram of body mass, or if you um, analyze that relatively to the lever arm of the system and you analyze the torque and the, the, the force itself, you take into account or not the body mass and the anthropometrics that give the lever arm. And if you take a look at the picture here, you understand perfectly that here in that situation, the newtons that you measure at the ankles also include an effect of the body mass and an effect of that body mass uh, distribution, which is indirectly um, measured through the torque. So it means you have a different information. And this has been clearly discussed in some papers comparing newtons to newtons per kilo to newtons per meter per kilo, for example. Uh, Martin Boucher did that in an IGSPP paper um, uh, last year. Uh, there's been a paper in physical therapy in sport where they compare academy and professional players in terms of newtons or newtons per body mass in the Nordboard test, for example. And this has been also discussed again by Martin Bouchet and his colleagues in, um, in a recent paper in the, in the sports performance and science reports. So this is clearly different info. And this has been discussed also in the new paper by Wiesinger uh, in Scandinavian, where they compare newtons on the Nordboard or a Nordboard-like test to isokinetic testing. And so what we did recently on a machine that's been um, uh, presented, validated, and, and, and patented by uh, JP Giacomo, this machine is uh, called the Amtec, and it allows us to do some Nordic testings, like classical mode. You have a knee flexor test here, and the subject drops when they cannot. But on this machine, we can also have some um, testing with the sprint-like extension, which means as the uh, angle of the knee extends, then the hip also extends, and you finish in the same sprint position with some support. And we also tested that with a flexed hip. So here, the hip flexion is 90 degrees, so it means that you go uh, deeper into the extension. And basically, when you do that, and when you do that also in unilateral uh, conditions, you can um, stimulate differently and you can find the real condition of peak strength and peak torque output. And when you do so, you can answer the question, what is exactly the real maximum torque output of that player, regardless of the condition? Because some players reach higher torques in different conditions. And if you do only the Nordic testing here in blue, you never have the peak torque of uh, a given individual player, because the peak torques were uh, found for each player where you see a flashing red light. So it means that no player had their maximum torque during the Nordic hamstring exercise, the classic one, be it unilateral or bilateral. And the maximum torque was between 10 and 52% higher in different conditions. So it means that if you allow the player to have the good uh, hip angle, uh, support, assistance, resistance, unilat or bilat conditions, then you will find their actual maximum capacity in the uh, hamstring eccentric strength. If you only do the Nordic test, you will find a force uh, or even a force per unit of body mass. But in this cohort, it's a small cohort, but we're doing some other stuff now, clearly, you will miss the target and you will have an information that's not the real uh, important information that you're looking for, in my opinion.